All right, uh, what is test automation? And try not to give me a textbook version of the answer. Give me like, I'm talking to my three-year-old answer. What is test automation? It's what lazy people do, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's a what? Check it. Okay. Okay, so that's part of the answer. Absolutely. Same thing you want to do again in the interpretation. Okay, that's part of the answer. What else? Not doing that something. Okay. So basically, if we were talking to a three-year-old, it's two things, right? It's the computer checking something for me, and also the computer doing it over and over for me, right? So there's two things happening. That's exactly what this is. It's a process of writing a computer program to do testing. It would otherwise need to be done by you. And it's also a process of executing those tests based on certain conditions. All right, so in advanced class, we're actually going to talk about CI. CI stands for Continuous Integration, and it's basically an umbrella that's used to describe tools like Bamboo, Jenkins, Circle CI. Uh, I'm blanking out. There's at least like six other ones out there. But um, so there are systems out there that will run your tests for you without you having to say go, right, and clicking that button. And that's part of automation. All right, that is part of automation, but we're going to be covering this part. All right, um, so there are two types of test automation, code-driven testing and graphical user interface testing. Um, which one do you think our stuff falls under? So let's do this. If you think it's the first one, raise your hand. Come on, come on. If you think it's still a second one, raise your hand. If you haven't raised your hand, raise your hand. <laughs> oh, honest people, good job. All right, it's actually both. Some people already know this because they've heard me say this before. It's both because we're going to be using test unit. Test unit is actually a unit testing framework. It's designed for code testing, all right? Not for, for user interface testing. And then we're going to be using WebDriver, which is designed for user interface testing. What we're doing is we're doing this, <coughs> right? We're combining both. Not only that, uh, we're also going to, well, not in this class, but in advanced class, we're going to talk about things like um, uh, data-driven testing, where you basically write a piece of code and you supply data into it, all right? So you, you throw different data into it, and different test cases are magically created based on the data you threw in. And I can give you an example of that. You can pretty much all think of an example like that. Let's do login, right? So what is login? Enter, enter, click. Enter, enter, click, right? So type, type, click, type, type, click. And how many login test cases can you think of? More than, more than five, right? More than 10 maybe, right? So more than a certain number, there's many of them. But it's always the same thing. Type, type, click, check your result. Type, type, click, check your result, right? So you can write one little piece of code and just supply data in and re you reuse the code instead of having to copy paste 10 times. So yeah, it's both. But most people consider WebDriver to fall under user interface testing, just an FYI. Um, okay, advantages of automation, people already screamed out some of them. One of them was that you can do it repetitively over and over and over without going crazy. That's a good, good advantage. What are some other advantages? What are advantages of automation? Why do it? We might miss certain things that Save time, so it's fast. What else? Save money. Why? How does it save money? Well, that's true, but developers cost more. But I still think it is save money because you automate this. Over time, over time, over time, it does save you money, but also you save money because there's less bugs, so you lose less customers. Right? Um, okay, uh, you don't miss things. So there's this uh, thing called human efficiency. Humans over time learn how to be more efficient 
by taking shortcuts and cutting corners. And unfortunately, sometimes that's not a good thing, all right? And in code, that's not a good thing. Um, for example, I, and I don't notice this about myself, if I already know a URL of something, I'm not gonna go through six different menus to get there. I'm just gonna type it in and be like, damn, I'm there, right? There you go, fight. But a computer, it, it doesn't take that shortcut. It will still go menu, 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 right? So it's one of those examples. So let's look at what else we have here. So we have reliable, repeatable, reusable, better quality software, speed, and we have cost reduction. Um, I'm not gonna dwell on most of these. Most of you can understand um, what all of those say. So anyways, um, what is Selenium? Well, the first thing you should realize is that Selenium is not one tool, it's a set of tools. The first one we're gonna get acquainted with is called Selenium ID. However, it's a learning tool. It's not your means to an end. I don't expect you to go to a job and only use Selenium ID and succeed. It's a crutch. It's a crutch that will help us learn to walk. Ultimately though, WebDriver is where you want to go, all right? WebDriver is the library, again, that you will end up using depending on which language you end up writing in, right? And even if you don't end up writing in Python, and I'm completely okay with you not writing in Python, if even if you decide to do Ruby or Perl or Java or PHP or anything else, right? Um, WebDriver is what you're gonna be using. All right, make sense? Selenium ID is just so we can learn how to use locators. So we can start understanding how um, automation works in general. So sometimes you need to wait for things. Sometimes you need to you know, check things. Sometimes you need to do things, right? That, that's essentially what we're doing Selenium ID for. Um, there's also other pieces of Selenium, other pieces that are, well, WebDriver, right? So Selenium ID, WebDriver. There's also a piece called Remote Server. And uh, there's also a piece called Selenium Grid, right? Um, now, Remote Server, has two uses. Remote server is used when you want to be able to kick off tests from your machine, but actually run them somewhere else. Can you think of two examples of why you might want to do that? Kick off tests from here, but have them run over there? Close-ish, but you can still access the database from somewhere else, so why? So one example I think all of you can totally relate with, um, I'm on the Windows, but I need to check my code on Safari browser. Can I run Safari browser on my machine? No. So I need to somehow be able to run it on a machine that has a Safari browser. But my tests are here, right? So I can either go physically install all of my code on another machine and go and click the button there, or I can just basically say, uh, okay, remote server up, run the test on that machine. Two steps, I'm done, right? That's cool, that's number one. Um, Number two reason is actually not as apparent, and it actually ties into Selenium Grid. Selenium Grid is when you want to run multiple tests at the same time. So if you have a lot of tests, like a thousand, and each one of them takes two minutes, which is not bad, um, you can see how that can take a really long time to execute, right? And we're, honestly, nobody is that patient. Nobody's gonna be waiting for two minutes times a thousand, whatever how many hours that works out to be. So at some point we start splitting them and running them concurrently and that's what Selenium Grid lets you do. But how does it let you do it? There is a hub and it actually communicates to multiple remote servers. And each one of those remote servers runs on a different machine and communicates back the results. So it's a basically a way to multiplex. That makes sense? There's actually a third reason to have a remote server and that is who's heard of Appium? Appium. Some people are into mobile. So it's it basically a tool for mobile automation. And Appium is actually built on top of Selenium or WebDriver remote server. It literally boots up remote server, but it converts, instead of converting the commands you send into JavaScript, it converts them into, you know, whatever, Android, Java language, or um, iOS, C Sharp language. So that's its own thing. But it's still built on remote server. Um, so, I think all of that is pretty self-explanatory and I've already listed all those languages multiple times, so I won't do it again. Now, it is cross-browser, uh, Selenium is cross-browser, but out of the box, it only runs on Firefox, all right? 
If you want to run it on Google Chrome, there's an extra little bit you need to have. All right? You can still use it, but you need to download an extra little um, executable, and you actually need to point to it in order to run on Google Chrome. Similarly with Opera, you need to download an extra little executable. Safari is actually unique because you, yeah, you still need to download an executable, but you execute it and it attaches to your Safari. And after that, you never have to do it again. Like you don't have to have it on your computer anymore. It actually modifies your Safari browser versus these all other executables. They just kind of hang out on your system forever. And if you ever remove them, things are broken. But if you put it back, it's fixed again. So it's, it's a fun, sorry, I have like a cord here. Um, so Selenium at this point is pretty old. It was actually invented in 2004. It didn't really become mainstream until 2006. Um, it was originally called JavaScript Functional Tester, Tester, and it was originally done 100% in JavaScript HTML. Right now, however, uh, most of the actual Selenium core is done in Java. So the actual core is all Java. It was originally designed to make test writing easy, and it's open source, which basically means it is free. Okay, you ready for the trivia? Okay, go back to your chemistry days. Find selenium. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Did you find it? Did you find it? Did you find it? So selenium is actually number 34. And who knows what selenium is used for? Exactly. Somebody's looking at my PowerPoint. Good job. And uh, there's a joke behind that. I, I think some of you are too young to know this. But there used to be this company called Mercury, and it owned all of these really expensive softwares, such as Windrunner, and QTP, and Loadrunner, and um, what else am I missing? Test Director. And um, they were very, very expensive, but they were also very difficult to use. They were just a pain in the butt to use. So this little uh, company came out and decided to create Selenium, which is supposed to solve this poisoning by Mercury. So the irony is that now both Mercury products and Selenium are owned by the same company, which is HP. HP bought it all up. And I don't think Test Director exists anymore. Is Test Director dead? Who knows? Is it dead? I know QTP and Loadrunner are still alive, but is Test Director dead? No. Yeah, so it's dead, right? I, I, yeah, I think it's dead now. And I think Windrunner is dead as well. Okay, so basically these are the tools. I already listed them out. There's Selenium ID. Selenium ID lets you export into WebDriver, and after that you have a choice. You can either run WebDriver through a uh, remote server. You can run it directly. You can run it through remote server, or you can run it through the hub on multiple remote servers. Right? Make sense? Which is what I explained like two slides back. <laughs>